Graham Tudor think it's all over. Sitting with David Gower is a comedian who rather surprisingly appeared on the new look Question Time recently, drawing looks of surprise from her fellow guests, David Essex, Sonia and Big Cliff Lazarenko. <laughs> Joe Brand. <laughs> David's other guest now presents ITV's On the Ball, but spent the summer as Sky's main sports presenter, so she may not know who won the World Cup, but she's well up to date on the monster truck racing from Idaho. <laughs> Gabby Europe. With Gary and Rory is an actress who's famous for her role in Father Ted, although without all her makeup, you'd never believe she was Father Jack. Pauline McLean. <laughs> <laughs> we start the show with our excuses round, in which we take lame explanations for sporting failure and treat them with the contempt they deserve. Gary, Rory, and Pauline, your excuse concerns the high priest of English football, Glenn Hoddle, and his troublesome former disciple, Paul Gascoigne. And Gascoigne again. Lovely. Go! Wonderful. After England's defeat in France, Hoddle sold the serialisation rights of his World Cup diary to the Sun for a massive amount of money. But when the story appeared in the paper, headlined, Gaza trashed my room, a huge row broke out. So what was Hoddle's excuse for remaining silent and allowing the offending headline to appear in the paper? Gary's team. Well, I've, I've um, actually read Glenn Hoddle's um, World Cup diary. It's, it's brilliant. Is it? Yeah, it's, well, I, I actually find it quite moving because, uh, if I can just remember, there's one passage. It's a uh, Monday, <laughs> stayed in, Tuesday, stayed in, Wednesday, stayed in, Thursday, knocked out. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Do you have a favourite team? I've got something on that I'll show you later. Oh, okay. yeah, no, right. Right. Aston Villa! Yes! <laughs> well, you've like won them over there, Paulie. Do you like that? Do you want to see my Arsenal boxer shorts? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't scored for ages in those. <laughs> Don't get anything else. What was Glenn Hoddle's <laughs> excuse for the headline being in the sun? I think it was... It was something that no, the fax machine messages didn't work, wrong, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it something like that? Or too much, run out of paper on the fax machine uh, yeah, and it was supposed you, to come through and it didn't, or something yeah, like I'll that. I'll give you three points for that, yeah. Glenn claimed he would have rung up and stopped the headline, but he couldn't. Here's The Guardian's Martin Thorpe, who broke the story to explain why. Well, the reason that Hoddle said he couldn't bet the headline was because, quote, at the end of the day, the fax machine was broken. And, of course, there's no other way of getting through it. No, no, no. Hello, sorry, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to Glenn, at the end of the day, the fax machine wasn't working. In fact, it was actually Gaza who broke it, trying to get a can of Fanta out of it. <laughs> Hoddle is such a committed Christian that he recently visited Bethlehem. He rode through the streets on Tony Adams. <laughs> David, Gabby and Joe, a cricketing excuse for you here at England rampaging to a sensational and famous victory at Lords in the Cricket World Cup for women. <laughs> it's going Britain. Yes. But until recently the pitch was about the only part of Lords that was open to women. So why after 211 years did the gin-soaked old dodderers of the MCC finally allow the opposite sex in David's team. Does the um, Does MCC stand the for the Marylebone Continents Challenge? <laughs> <laughs> I have to defend the MCC. Yeah, uh, the MCC. Gus what, organization what which Maybe if you'd done more defense in front of the wicket, that would have been a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit late for that, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's fair. Fair. It was all right. It always well. was. <laughs> so, Lineker, he's a member of the MCC as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got in because yeah. of my cricketing ability. He got in because he's an honorary member. I was... <laughs> I was captaining Leicester at the time. So they deferred it? So they put it off till I retired, yeah. It's the same thing as deferred. <laughs> <laughs> will you propose me as a member? Uh, yes. I'd like to I get will. a shag off those old bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, actually... You were actually, if, if, actually if you joke, did, hang on. If, if you did... That would actually clear probably about 20 spaces in a hurry. That would get the membership ticking over rather nicely. No, that's, that's if I lie down on them. 
Joe wouldn't get in because every member has to have a very specific haircut and Bob Willis has already got the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got a long room, haven't they? Mm -hmm. A long room in the MCC. And I reckon when the women get in there, they'll discover it's a lot shorter than the men originally <laughs> said. <laughs> It's because they're a far-sighted, liberal, modern club and they realise that women have a role mm -hmm. to play in the 21st century. They must have the women in the club. They mm -hmm. wanted to get some lottery money. I think that's basically <laughs> right, yes. Here's former England captain Rachel Hayhoe Flint with the answer on a typical summer's day at Lord's. The MCC failed to get lottery funding because it was a single-gender club and that was one of the main reasons that they were urging their members to vote in favour. What a lying toad she is. <laughs> so you're saying we should believe you rather than Rachel Hayhoe Flint, who was a captain of an England cricket side that never lost. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably she knows a lot more about cricket than you do. <laughs> but you got your three points anyway. No, thank you. Yes, the well, MC I, said, I, I, don't, I don't want those three points. Don't <laughs> gouge any points away, no change there then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well then, um, it's runs in our game. <laughs> How would you know? <laughs> I told you you should have had that banana in the um, green Sorry? room. Never mind about that. <laughs> it's appropriate that the lottery should fund English cricket uh, for as long as anyone can remember. Every week has been rollover week for the team. <laughs> can I just ask David about the toilets at the MC? They're obviously Please going do, to have to alter yeah. the toilets, aren't they? Because there's obviously more male toilets than females. No, the female toilets, lovely, it's fine. How do you know? Because he popped in there with Rachel Hayhoe. <laughs> Longest partnership he's had at Lords. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. <laughs> Incidentally, if you were watching a couple of weeks ago, you'll have heard the news that David Gower's fallen on hard times since the BBC lost the cricket. But we didn't realise quite how hard until we found this picture in the paper. The rental company has repossessed David Gower's swans. <laughs> You've heard of swan rental before? <laughs> anyway, in this round we play the team some weird bits of sporting footage and ask that often posed question, what's going on? Gary's team, have a look at this. Go. How many more left to go? Please tell me. It's a euthanasia contest. Isn't so, it? what do we think was oh. happening there? Could I just see it again? Because I think I recognise somebody in that, actually. Yeah, look, it's Michelle Smith before she failed the drugs test. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Gaz? I think they'd have had a problem if they had a false start getting her out. <laughs> <laughs> About three weeks. Come back! Come <laughs> on! <laughs> it's obviously some sort of um, Olympiad yeah. for old people, mm -hmm. featuring events like mint sucking, <laughs> smelling of cat, <laughs> talking, <laughs> talking about your operation. I wouldn't like to see the top of the stars competition of that material. <laughs> Was that last woman Sally Gunnell without a slap on? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's obviously some sort of competition for, for mm. Wrinkly. Yes, fair enough. I'll give you three points for that. They were highlights of this special games for old people. I said they were the highlights for special people who were old. <laughs> Every competitor has to have a compulsory urine test. You're immediately chucked out if you don't smell of urine. <laughs> And every gold medalist gets a £5,000 cash prize, although they're usually conned out of it by a bogus roofer by the end of the year. <laughs> David Steam, here's your bit of film. Uh, Charlton. Oh. Oh, Jackie Charlton. Hey, okay, that's off. No. Sorry, you're off. I know, but there's, I can't help it. If there's so many, I've just got to do it, haven't I? I've oh, already left at this rate. There you go, sir. Oh, thanks very much, Thank you. 
<laughs> so, um, can you explain that David's team well, first, that? first of all, can we just rewind that bit? Because if you notice that when that guy gives him a cup of tea, he says, thanks very much, useless to him. <laughs> <laughs> can, well, let's have a look, can we? Hardly any left at this rate. There you go, sir. Oh, thanks very much, useless. <laughs> I think that that bloke that came on at the end is actually a community psychiatric nurse. <laughs> and he's giving him a cup of Largactyl. <laughs> is that any more of a help? No, the thing that we, help him, yeah. we couldn't see was the linesman running up and down the corridor. <laughs> I think I saw this. This is a Panorama programme, Panorama Special on loneliness. That was amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> and you just happened to tune in. I was just... <laughs> It was David Ellery, wasn't it? It was. I recognise the game. Mm-hmm. Your football, well done. Thank you. Hey! Gabby, I... Gabby Yorick reliving her interview for On The Ball. <laughs> what game is this? Football! You've got it! You're in! No problem! <laughs> it was the 1970 Cup Final between Leeds and Chelsea. Mm. Well, he's obviously re-refereeing it, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Three points to David's team. That was top whistleblower David Ellery re-refereeing the 1970 FA Cup final replay between Leeds and Chelsea for Total Football magazine. He was asked to apply present-day laws to one of the most notoriously violent games in English football history. <coughs> David Ellery produced no fewer than 20 yellow cards and sent off six players. In 1970, the real referee, Eric Jennings, booked only one player, and that was for cowardice in the face of the enemy. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points, and Gary's team have six points. We continue on our way with the photo opportunities round. David's team, it's Britain's best loved human being for you. <laughs> so why did Desmond Lynham agree to become Our Lady's first mustachioed nun? He's just left David Ellery's house. And? Well, he was doing the, um, the presenting in the garage. <laughs> You're in your own world there. <laughs> I, I think it's quite sad, this, because that costume has actually stuck to him. And it's a habit, he just can't... <laughs> <laughs> Is it an advert? <laughs> Maybe. For panty liners or something? <laughs> well, I think you're using them wrongly then, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you don't strap them around your yeah. forehead. <laughs> Oh, then I put tomato so ketchup on and go down Sainsbury's and upset them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. I know you David right. doesn't know what Sainsbury's is, so you say. <laughs> it's like Fortnum and Mason. <laughs> Did he take a vow of chastity after that News of the World story? <laughs> what News of the World story? <laughs> the one my staff read to me. <laughs> I think it might be something to do with um, Mr Lineker. I'll give you three points for that. Yet the sad truth is that it's all Gary's fault. Gary recruited Dez for an advert he was doing for an unknown brand of crisps, in which St Dez turned sinner by nicking some of Gary's. Des Lynham was the subject of tabloid frenzy when Tula, the sex change model, announced that Des had slept with her in 1979. I love the way his beautiful moustache tickled my face, said Des. <laughs> Gary's team, you get the man solely to blame for England being knocked out of the World Cup. Well, one of them anyway. So why is <laughs> David Batty dressed up to look like one of Des Lynham's old girlfriends? I'll tell you, with those shoes, it's no wonder he missed that penalty. <laughs> I think Batty was angling for a transfer to Spurs and thought he'd make himself attractive to David Pleat this way. <laughs> as far as I know, um... David Batty is renowned for his fearsome tackle. And I think if you look <laughs> very closely, you can just about make it out there. You know. Is it a two-footed tackle? Like the Dublin's this is a sexy football sort of thing, isn't it? Maybe. Rude Hullet and all that. Oh, yeah, Rude Hullet just take it over mm. Newcastle, hadn't he? Mm -hmm. And it was the first... Was it televised on Channel, Channel 5, 5 or something? Mm -hmm. And they were doing sexy football ads. Absolutely right, yeah. It's actually a mocked-up photograph used to promote Channel 5's coverage of Newcastle's short-lived venture into Europe this season under the slogan, See Rude Hullet's Sexy Football. 
England crashed out of the World Cup when David Batty missed a penalty after Hoddle famously decided that the team shouldn't practice taking them because there was no way of simulating the incredible pressure. That's the incredible pressure of a penalty shootout when you haven't had any practice. <laughs> <laughs> After his penalty miss, Batty received 1,500 letters of support. Unfortunately, all of them were from Gareth Southgate. <laughs> and so at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points, and David's team have nine points. Oh, wonderful. Time now for our teams to put on a pair of blindfolds and touch up a total stranger without even having to pay for the privilege. So, David and Joe, if you could make your way to the front, please. No, the girls I'd, can do I'd it. I'd like to do it. It's the only reason do I'm you want to do it, it, to do it? Oh, I suppose. So, how far is it to walk? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Gabby, you come over here. Go stand on that side. Oi, bog off. Look at that. You're looking at my arse now. <laughs> 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 You have 90 seconds to identify the mystery personality by touch alone. I hope it's a bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Joe, it's not too bad. <laughs> I thought there was an eclipse. <laughs> Come on. It's better than you had it. <laughs> And we have our first mystery guest, please. <laughs> and your 90 seconds start now. Stand up straight so we can see how tall you are. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> You are standing well, up I've got a sort of iron, iron mask on up here. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I'll go around the back. <laughs> it's quite rough. <laughs> Gabby, Which is good. a very strange penis. <laughs> strange about that? <laughs> it's yes. about 12 foot longer than yours. <laughs> yeah, but it's but the it's same width. <laughs> so he's got a sort of sword thing on him and, and a mask. Is it a Millwall <laughs> fan? <laughs> Commonwealth gold medalist, I believe. Oh, it's going to be a fencer. A fencer. Oh, well done. That's what yes. So what was the name of that, that bloke that won the Commonwealth Gold in <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it, um, it was James something. James, <laughs> James, James Wales. Well, fences up, no. fences up. No. Oh. It was, in fact, James Williams. Brave effort. Oh. Brave effort. Yeah. Oh. Are we going to keep this up? Are you going to go, Pauline? You're going to get up there? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, Rory, if you take okay. your positions, please. Already, I can't see anything. Rory, can you see? <laughs> Rory, Guy. stay over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we have our second mystery <laughs> guest, please? Your 90 seconds start now! <laughs> Joe, Joe? <laughs> Say something. <laughs> you smell lovely, whoever you Thank are. Thank you. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'd recognise Gary anyway. Oh, well. <laughs> it's a woman, definitely. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Rory, I reckon, it's I, the end of series party all over again. <laughs> Did you just get there that I didn't get? A <laughs> disease. I wonder. <laughs> yeah. 
this, this is a, definitely it's it's a fighting woman. Is it a yes? Is it a wrestler? Wrestler. <laughs> wrestler. The lady wrestler. Lady wrestler. Possibly. The British Commonwealth Lady Wrestler Champion. Klondike Cage. At the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have Ooh. nine yeah. points. Yeah. We end, as usual, with our stocking-wearing, card-brandishing name game. This week, instead of saying their clues, we want Rory and Joe to draw their sportsmen. Their teammates have two and a half minutes to identify who the doodles are supposed to represent. Who's team go first? Pauline? No. Can you pass that to Rory, please? No. <laughs> OK, as many names as you can get through in the next... Hang on, hang on, let me get me top off. 150 seconds. Start now. King. Nearly. King Nassim. Prince. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Prince Nassim, oh, yeah, you still <laughs> king. King. <laughs> Brian Giggs. Uh, David Beckham. Correct. Ooh. Ooh. Now you're George Swack. Rude Hullard. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Very good. Rude Hullard. Close, close, close. Oh. And um, the sport is... Tennis. Tennis. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, Venus Williams. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> they all start the same, don't they? Oh. <laughs> Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Batty. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, Newcastle-ish. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a good one. Uh. Oh. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> Is it a bird? Is it a kite? <laughs> Come on. Is it E.T.? E. So yeah, simple. Oh, yeah. It's some sort of wrestling... Yeah, go on. Yeah. Oh, Clark Kent! Oh, Clark Kent! Clark Kent! Big red nose. Yes, yeah, um, Michael. Yeah, pinch Michael. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Eagle. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Oh, Eddie the Eagle. Yeah. Eddie yeah. Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> Me. Close. Gary Lindeker. Oh, oh no. Michael. Des Lyman. Yeah. Oh. Well, well done. done. Well done, Rory. 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 So, so they've moved on to 18, which means that you need 9 to draw level and 10 to win. So, Emma, could you pass those to Joe, please? <laughs> and your two and a half minutes start now. I can read that from here, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> what is it then? It's Glenn Hoddle. Okay, Glenn Hoddle. Glenn Hoddle. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this one, Gary? I'll see that one. Is it a. Don uh, King. Well done. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Must be the angle. <laughs> Paul Gascoigne. Well done. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> um. A tennis player who cries. Oh, New York, the Butler. Well done. Is that a tennis racket? No, it's a cricket, don't it's a, no, it's cricket. I haven't got a clue now. <laughs> you wrote your way home, Flint? No. Is it an MCC member? Put that on her head. Hit her with it. Oh, oh Jeff oh, 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 Boycott? Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> You can come again. It's not like. 
<laughs> Just once would be nice. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cricket and... What Maybe is the eyes, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Oh, WG Grace. Yes. Well done. Oh. Yes. Is that a rugby ball? Well, Will Carling's a start. Did you say? Yeah. Will Carling, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Now, the final score is David's team with 17, Gary's team with 18, but... Ah, what? But I have a sad story to relate. On the second show of this series, a lot of people were surprised when Gary's team, out of the blue, correctly identified an excerpt from Roger Black's autobiography. Well, investigation, it turns out that before the show, Gary Lineker had sweet-taught the autocue girl into giving him one of the answers. So Gary Lineker has been cheating again, and I've decided to dot Gary one point, which means <laughs> that the final yeah, scores are now Nick, Gary's team 17, Nick, David's team true. 17, and it's a tie break. Not, not true. true. Well, I, I can only go on the information I'm giving. It was you. Can we have our point back? No. <laughs> So, for the tie-break, we take you back to another disastrous England cricket tour, this time to Zimbabwe, a couple of winters ago. In this clip, you can see Sky's Charles Colville interviewing journalists during a test. But we want you to ignore all that and keep your eye on former England all-rounder Derek Pringle in the top left-hand corner of your screen. English players and management sometimes think that the uh, British... <laughs> <laughs> It was so, so, the question is, did Derek Pringle, A, <laughs> flick what he picked across the press box, or B, put it in his mouth? David, <laughs> David's team, you've got first pick, as it were. I think he ate it. Uh, B, they all agree. Well, yeah. you think he ate it, he ate which it. means you've got flicked across the press room. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who was right. The English players and management oh, sometimes think that the uh, British oh, no. media only don't likes... Don't eat it! Don't eat it! There you go, you see? There you go, you see? Pringles, once you start, you just can't stop. <laughs> Which means that David's team are this week's yes. winners! Oh, So it's thanks to David, Joan, Gabby, Gary, Rory and Pauline. We're all off to cheer on David Gower at the Old People's Games. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Anthony Hopkins and Alan Davis all talk with Clive Anderson next here on BBC One. And a reminder, you can catch England's Rugby International.